Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dominique, a first year grad student and full-time medical lab scientist. So we left off with my first week of school in my previous vlog. Well, now it's time for my first exam. And I'm not gonna lie, I have not had time to study like I would like to have had. Um, I definitely underestimated taking these classes on top of working a hectic work schedule. I guess I thought that this class was going to teach more clinical aspects of infectious disease so that it would be a review for me, but no, like the primary focus is genetics and what's going on in research. So it's all new info for me, which is good because um, it's very interesting. I'm learning new things, but I'm not really retaining what I'm learning. And it's not that I don't know how to study, it's more so that I'm not finding the time to study like I need to. I don't work a consistent schedule, so I have no consistent routine to study. I do work 12s, but my schedule days rotates a lot, which is part of the problem. Someone might be like, well, you have four days off to study then, but because I work 12s, everything is closed when I get off work at seven. So my days off are spent running errands, going to the doctor, doing car maintenance, doing my adulting stuff and so by the time I finish the day is over with and I'm right back to working another 12. So it's been hard for me to plan my time to study and I'm also in the process of moving hence the different <laughs> color of the walls and I've blocked out four hours to sit down and review and really get this stuff in my head because the exam is due tonight since I gotta work tomorrow and um, I have a lot to review. Please, this is not an endorsement to cram. I honestly just left myself no choice and I guess time is just moving by really fast. <laughs> digital version on my iPad and they're not even using it like they're not even teaching from it so I got annoyed and pissed because I spent all that money to buy a book that I'm not even gonna be using and I don't remember if I rented or bought it but they're not even teaching from it so I was like let me find me another resource because their PowerPoint just wasn't doing it like I just I can't learn from pictures and <laughs> in PowerPoints I need to read what's going on so I found this book Medical Microbiology by Patrick Murray et al. And I just felt like putting this in here because sometimes you can't always go off of what the required textbooks are. You kind of just have to figure out what's right for you. And no, I do not recommend you buying this if you are an MLS student, this is not gonna help you. This is not focused on diagnostic microbiology. The focus is medicine. But I'm hoping that it'll help me throughout the rest of my master's because I'm literally focused on medical microbiology. <laughs> so I should be able to use this as a reference for the rest of, of my time in school. Off to take my exam. Wish me luck. I'm not talking about an exam. I'm moving on with my life and I'll do better on the next time. Because that was a mess. But um, I'm getting ready for work. I have scrubs on. So I can go to my PRN job. I'm scheduled to work a 12 in blood bank. I used to wear the scrub cap all the time, like in my first six months of working, then it disappeared, but I finally found it now that I'm moving. I was going to wear it tonight, but I don't think it's going to fit the same because my hair is long. I don't think I like the way that it looks. The only thing this is giving is a headache. You wear scrub caps. What brand do you use? And please send me some that won't give me a headache. <laughs> Because this can work, it's just, it's going to hurt my head all night. Might have to retire this one. 
So I told you I had to work blood bank yesterday. Um, when I got off, I kind of just went to bed because I was tired, but I wanted to share what happened during shift. And I'm prefacing this with the information that I don't work PRN in a trauma hospital, nor do I work in a pediatric facility, but for some reason, all of my emergencies have been children experiencing trauma. So it's always nerve wracking for me, for ER, just everyone involved because something weird usually happens. But this time I found myself in the room with the patient and we don't normally leave the lab. Like we're on standby, just kind of waiting and preparing units for the runner to come grab coolers. So I was on round four of the MTP and uh, we walked the next cooler over with the next round of units just out of courtesy, but also because we need to get some paperwork done. So I was like, let's be smooth with it. <laughs> <laughs> just go on over there and um, let me get these documents signed and so the doctor was like really pleasant welcomed us over and was like come on in and join us and um this patient was a stab victim and so they were bleeding so badly from their chest and from their thigh and um there were all these people in the room trying to resuscitate them um all of our used up units just kind of laying on the floor on the side we found the nurse hand on the units that started the transfusion they were literally <laughs> hanging just everything that they could and I was like okay bye this is enough and so I took myself right back <laughs> to the lab <laughs> um obviously because I needed to get next round of stuff going and so um I think we ended up getting to round seven before they were able to get them to the helicopter but, um, it was pretty impactful for me because I could see directly how my work was helping the patient Obviously the work we do is important, but I don't see the end result of my results. So I don't really think about it that much. Um, but this time was different because I was in the room and that's not, that doesn't usually happen for blood bankers, but even the doctors and the charge nurse thanked us for making sure this MTP went smooth. So it's definitely a core memory for me, um, a proud moment for me as a tech, because I know I did my best in this situation. Obviously I do try to do my best in all the situations, but I know this time, I did all that I could for this patient. And so I'm starting to realize that um, I think I like interacting with the other departments in the hospital. Like I was thinking the other day, I wouldn't mind having a job in the lab that allowed me to interact more with the care team for the patients, preferably in micro, like maybe at a teaching hospital or something where I just have more involvement and can understand more of what happens after I report my results beyond the generic knowledge. But yeah, I was just thinking I wanted to share that with you and kind of get it off my mind. While it's still fresh in my memory before I forget, um, I work with so many people in the lab that are like, oh, blood bank. <laughs> but I don't know, like it's pretty adrenaline pumping in a good way. It's fast paced work with immediate results. Like you know that the work that you're doing is immediately gonna help this patient. And it's not really like that for the other departments. So I enjoy it because I know that I'm gonna do my best to help. Another interesting thing that I had was the other day PRN, um, I was in chemistry that shift, but this patient came in through the ER and their CMP came back abnormal for blood glucose. It was 562 and the CO2 was eight, like very much given DKA. Then I got the, I received the order to run the hemoglobin A1C and it was 19.9%. My reporting range stopped at 20.1%. So that was the highest I've ever seen in A1C. And it's another example of a situation where I'm glad that I could help this patient get the treatment they needed. Granted, they do bedside glucose testing, so they were probably already being treated before I even got the tubes. But still, you know, these results really help people. <laughs> and yeah, so I just wanted to share that. sitting in a car because I have some training to go to, but um, my PRN job is going through an LAS changeover. They are um, working on integrating Epic Beaker. So I have a lot of trainings to go to over the next few days. Actually, not that really. The other day I had a blood bank training for Hamonetics, which will be the new blood bank system to pair with Epic. Um, and it was long, like eight hours of training. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I'm sure it has to be better than SunQuest. If you work with Hamanetics, how do you feel about it? Like leave it in the comments if you have any tips, tricks or anything <laughs> for changing over to this system. Um, but I am kind of interested to see how it actually will work like in production. So anyway, today is day two of Epic Beaker training. That's why I said I didn't really have that much training left to do, but um, 
I have been training as a super user, which is cool because I'll be able to assist with the go live next month and just kind of overall assisting the staff with changing over and adjusting to Epic Beaker. And I'm excited. <laughs> this is really cool. And I'm glad that they gave me the opportunity to do it because they really didn't have to. They could have given that slot to a full-time employee, but they didn't. They let me in on training for a super user. So it's really awesome. But yeah, I went to Sprout because I was eating a sandwich, but it's gone now so that I'm not hungry because I'm going to be in this training until one. It's also a pretty long training. <sighs> okay, I'm back in the office again because I'm done with training. It went well. I've literally been telling my coworkers for like the last year that they will love Epic because I use it at my full-time job. It takes a, a bit of time to adjust coming from SunQuest, but it's so much easier because it's so user-friendly. I told you guys that I'm training as a super user. I trained as a super user. I think the expectation is that I will just help my coworkers with questions and figuring out the new system as we work together on shift. Um, and I'm scheduled to work the go live, so this is going to be exciting. Most of my coworkers have only ever used SunQuest for their entire career. And I went through it last year, transitioning <laughs> uh, to Epic at my full-time job. So I know how frustrating it can be. Because you know what you want to do, but you don't know how to navigate the system to get things done. So I, you know, I'm glad that I'm I'm gonna have the chance to help them out to get through this. I'm so excited because I've been expressing to leadership that I really wanted to help. Um, so for them to allow me to be a part of the changeover is really cool. We are also getting new analyzers too at the same time. I think it's the Roche Pros. We recently got the Sysmex UN for your analysis testing. We got rid of our iris. So yeah, it's just exciting things happening because new things don't normally happen in the lab, you know. So I've been excited about this change since 2021 <laughs> when I was full-time there and um, it's now 2024 that I'm still there, just PRN. So this is going to be so fun for me. Obviously, I hear terrible things about Go Lives, <laughs> but it's exciting for me because I've never experienced it before. So I'm hoping for the best, but I'm not sure what actually happens at a go live because i never attended one like this at this big um because we're going live on the entire system the entire health system not just at my hospital so not really sure what i'm going to be doing <laughs> obviously i'll be working the bench but i'm not sure if i'm going to be working the bench like doing downtime testing or if they're going to have me like being the one to, to send out the first result <laughs> in production so that'll be interesting, but I'm excited. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys later so I can get back to studying <laughs> for my next um, module. Um, I'm sorry, this vlog was just a lot of me talking, but just kind of just updates what's going on in my life. I'll talk to you guys next time. Mm -hmm.